Hello friends and welcome to Digimento. So today we are going to discuss some of the tricks to crack the MCQs. The examination, the UGC net exam or the NTA net examination. So NTA net examination is soon approaching and also many other examinations. This is not just for NTA net examination. This tricks can be universally or you know in common applied to any of the competitive examination which has a nature of solving MCQs or the objective type questions. So considering uh, the request from many students, I am making this lecture to discuss some of the tricks and tips in order to crack the MCQs. So you can apply these tricks to any of the examination and I hope this video will be helpful to you. So uh, let's begin but before that if you have not yet subscribed to our channel please do subscribe to our channel and also please press the bell icon for receiving the notifications from us. And if you are preparing for GATE, NTA, UGC NET or PGT Computer Science we are providing online classes for the same. You can get to know the details about the courses that we provide from our website which is www.digimento.com or you can call to this number for getting more details about the courses, online courses that we provide. So uh, let's quickly go into the video. Now uh, here as I said, I will be discussing a few tricks and tips on how to crack the MCQs. MCQs are multiple choice questions where a question is asked and you will be given at least 4 or 5 options. So mostly it is 4 options. So let's see how we can use some techniques to crack some of the MCQs. So before that, let's have a, a quick introduction about uh, the type of MCQs uh, based uh, examinations. So in MCQ based examination, uh, multiple choice questions will be asked, which means the nature of the examination will be objective type, which means the questions will carry along with them few options as well. So you have to choose the right one from the options. Now what does this mean? This clearly means that the answer for that particular question is right in front of you. So you are given 4 options or 5 options. Now among this 5 or 4 options you have the answer with that. So the best part about the MCQs is that you have the answer right in front of you. You just have to recognize which is the right answer. So with that in our mind let's carry on with this lecture with this video so basically the questions can be easy questions or hard it can be even moderate can come in between both of them that is moderate level questions as well so if the questions are easy and if you have prepared uh, well for the examination if you have given a decent preparation you can solve the questions directly so questions can be solved directly now the problem is when the questions are really hard, hard in the sense that the options are confusing or the close options are given or in such situations how we can crack the MCQs. So let's see. Now one very important uh, or very useful method is elimination method. For example, four options are given. Uh, after this uh, basic discussion, we will also see a few questions to uh, see how we can apply these techniques in the real examination. So don't worry, I will explain to you the elimination method and all that when we discuss a few questions in the same session. So just uh, telling you what is this elimination method. So basically the elimination method means that you will be given a few options like four options. Now you are really confused about which is the right answer. So uh, the question becomes easy or difficult based on the options given. It is not uh, with regard to how much knowledge you have to apply but with regard to the options that is given question becomes easy or hard. Say for example if the options are very close to each other you are not able to find out. In that case it's a hard question. If you can easily find out the right answer from the option then it is a very easy question. Now if it's very hard what you can do is elimination method four options are given you can look for the wrong one so if you are able to identify three wrong one out of four given options then you are arriving at the one right answer so this is called the elimination method so in elimination method we are not finding the right answer but we are finding the wrong answers and finally arriving at the right answer so how to eliminate the options for that 
you cannot simply eliminate the options for that you need some pre-existing knowledge so all these tricks and tips can be applied only if you have some basic level of preparation or at least some decent preparation now you will have definitely some pre-existing knowledge which is an accumulated knowledge so this pre-existing knowledge can be said as an accumulated knowledge accumulated over years it may not be that you have accumulated this knowledge over the preparation time it can be from your school days so from your school days onwards you might have accumulated lots of knowledge which can be included in your pre-existing knowledge you can apply that then second one is practice Practice means you have to do mock test, especially when it comes to MCQs. Uh, the uh, real examination should not be the first examination that you face, but you should have done at least some decent number of model examinations or mock test. Then next is the familiarity with the topic. If you have some decent level of preparation, definitely the topics from the syllabus will be familiar to you. So these are some of the preconditions where you can use this elimination technique effectively. So elimination technique is nothing but you are identifying the wrong answers and then coming to the right answer. Now uh, let's see how it can be done. So eliminate maximum options and can reach to 100% accuracy approximately so eliminate maximum options which means if four options are given you should be able to eliminate three options then the remaining one will be hundred percent correct okay now <coughs> now for example four options are given in a question so let's take this uh, example illustration where four options are given now if you are only able to eliminate one option then three more are remaining which means when if you mark any of the three you have only one by third probability of winning which is 33 percentage now if you are able to eliminate two options then you have 50 percentage probability of winning because you have only two more options left that means one by two the chance is one by two okay now attempt any question only if you know at least one option so uh, this elimination technique can be used only if you know at least one option is wrong otherwise don't go for elimination make sure you have at least 33 percentage of probability to win only in that case you should take and i will personally suggest that go for elimination technique when you have 50 percentage of chance at least that means if you are able to eliminate two options then you can definitely go for that question so you should definitely go for that question now a few other things <coughs> There will be some statements with extreme words like 100 percentage, all etc. So those uh, statements which have extreme statements or extreme words or those extreme statements, mostly it will be wrong. You can take a chance here. So extreme statements, you can take a chance that it can be wrong because we cannot uh, always say it 100 percentage there will be or shall be some exceptions so extreme statements sometimes it can be wrong now statements with vague words like may maybe it will be mostly correct because here may may maybe and all that it uh, it is uh, telling about the chances so there can be chance there can be at least one percentage of probability in any case so take uh, for example a person has fallen from the 10th floor and somehow uh, he did not die on the spot so he he was taken to the hospital so still there is one percentage probability that he will come back to life same way if statements give you vague uh, uh, ideas or like vague words are used like maybe may not be or may so in all that cases it talks about at least one percent probability which can be true for all cases so if you see such vague words then it can be correct then check carefully for keywords like correct incorrect etc because when you are in the exam mood uh, you might be tensed so uh, there is a chance that you will not see those keywords in the question like the question may be asking you which are the incorrect statements maybe you will not see this incorrect and then what you will do you will mark the correct ones so please see this keywords very very carefully 
so if it's an online examination there is no other choice but you have to uh, observe that if it's an offline examination i will suggest that uh, when you get the question paper immediately when you read the question when you see the keywords you can encircle them or underline them or whatever techniques that you use never assume any pattern of omr answer markings this is one very important point because many students assume that the omr will be following a pattern like for example i'll give you a very common example uh, which many of you might be able to connect suppose uh, you are answering the questions from 1 to 10 okay for the first five uh, questions you got uh, the option a as right now you are thinking okay the first five a is the answer so sixth one definitely it may not be a there is nothing like that okay so do not assume any pattern of the omr answer marking so do not assume anything now <coughs> let's uh, sorry let's come to a few questions okay so here we will see how we can use all these tricks and tips now first uh, question is dioxins are produced from so dioxins now if you have some basic knowledge what you can do is you can apply this basic knowledge so uh, see dioxins so if you know the answer uh, well and good okay you can directly mark it but in case if you do not know so dioxins okay this term is there so from this if you at least know that it's a pollutant or it's an air pollutant if you know that definitely you can mark the answer now here how you can use the elimination technique wasteland wasteland and dioxin uh, anyway there should not be a connection then power plants no sugar factories no the byproducts are the different one we know that combustion of plastics so there is some connection with air pollution because combustion burning of plastics leads to some pollutants being um, emitted into the atmosphere which can cause air pollution so with that logic and elimination technique you will get the right answer combustion of plastics now which of the following file format is not a video file format this is uh, definitely uh, a very easy question but still if you do not know here uh, the keyword is not a video file format so you have to note it down so the keyword is not so here elimination technique will be the easiest one because uh, most of you may be knowing the answer directly but even though you do not know the question is which one is not a video file format so you have to find whether you have to think whether aw is a video file format mov mp4 jpg so which one so jpg it's not a video file format it's a image format so it's a image format so here you can use the elimination technique okay so here you can use the elimination technique now the main constituents of biogas so what are the main ingredients of biogas methane and carbon dioxide methane and nitric oxide methane hydrogen and nitric oxide methane and sulfur dioxide so this uh, if you know the answer directly you can mark it otherwise methane is common in everything and uh, that is the major component it's so sure now carbon dioxide because uh, biogas the main constituents are uh, methane and carbon dioxide and even though biogas is a, no, a renewable source of energy this is also a polluting polluting one so even though it's renewable the pollution it can cause pollution so answer is carbon dioxide now which of the following is a non-conventional learning program in higher education now what is meant by non-conventional so non-conventional means conventional means traditional so conventional is traditional so you have to find out here which among the following is a non-conventional non-conventional means which is a uh, modern learning technique so modern not traditional it's a modern learning technique swayam face to face teaching learning tutorial class seminar from this you will directly get it otherwise if you want to apply the elimination swayam if you do not know swayam put it on hold okay let's see if we can eliminate the others face to face teaching that's a traditional one you know that so you can eliminate this tutorial class it's also traditional 
seminar it's traditional so even though you do not know what is swayam you know that the answer is swayam because you are able to eliminate all the other options so <coughs> now next question is volcanic eruptions so volcanic eruptions affect atmosphere and hydrosphere hydrosphere and biosphere lithosphere biosphere and atmosphere lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere so here the basic idea that we should have is there is an atmosphere then we have a hydrosphere then we have a what is called a uh, atmosphere hydrosphere and lithosphere lithosphere is land hydrosphere is water <coughs> and atmosphere is air now where all these meet, meet atmosphere hydrosphere and lithosphere where all these meet here life is possible and where life is possible when all these three meet this is called the biosphere bio means life so when there is a volcanic eruption if you know some basic idea about volcanic eruption you will know the volcanic eruptions uh, on which part of the earth does the volcanic eruptions affect so answer is lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere okay so this is how you can solve uh, the questions now among the following there are two statements which cannot be true together but can be false together select the code that represents them now two cannot be uh, two statements cannot be true together so all the poets are dreamers so dreamers poets no poets are dreamers now some poets are dreamers some poets are not dreamers so uh, which are the two statements that cannot go together so here see in the first statement it says that all the poets are dreamers so we have drawn this venn diagram now no poets are dreamers how these two can go together so it's controversial so it cannot go together now see second two statements c and d some poets are dreamers okay correct now some poets are not it's correct now the answer will be a and b so why because controversy all poets and no poets it cannot happen together okay sorry which of the following pollutants is not emitted from the transport sector so here the question is transport sector so pollutants which are not not is the keyword so you have to find out which of the pollutants is not emitted from transport sector which means out of the four given options three of the uh, options are uh, with related with relation to the transport sector or emitted by the transport sector now we have oxides of nitrogen chlorofluorocarbons carbon monoxide poly aromatic hydrocarbons now if you just know that the chlorofluorocarbons the cfcs they are emitted from air conditioners and refrigerators this is a basic understanding because we know that the cfcs are connected with ozone layer depletion now ozone layer depletion is mainly caused due to cfcs emission of cfcs and the major uh, sources of cfc emission are air conditioners and refrigerators if you have this basic knowledge then you can make it right answer is chlorofluorocarbons all others if you even do not know whether oxides of nitrogen are uh, pollutants from transport sector or carbon monoxide or poly aromatic hydrocarbons so still if you just know that chlorofluorocarbons they are emitted from air conditioners and refrigerators and also cause harm to the ozone layer then you can make it right i hope this session was helpful to you and uh, i hope this will help you in the upcoming exam not just for the net exam but all the examination if you like this video do not forget to share this video with your friends also and please support us by subscribing to our channel if you haven't please do share and like this video thank you so much for watching i'll continue the series where i'll come up with a few videos which will definitely help you for your examination please do take care thank you